the whole idea of integration by substitution is you start with some kind of integrand and you look at it and you think either I don't know how to integrate that or I do but it will be a colossal pain. For example, this particular function here, x times 1 minus x squared to the power of 4. You actually do know enough to deal with this thing without me telling you anything else, without learning extra techniques or things like that, because this 1 minus x squared to the power of 4, you could just expand it. I mean, you would be here until the sun sets, but you could do it, multiply by x, and then just go term by term, right? But mathematicians forever searching for simpler ways to do things, and so what we can do is, just like with our trigonometric integrals this morning, we can make a substitution here, and we can use basically reverse chain rule, okay? Now, in this instance here, this 1 minus x squared is the inside function, and its derivative, well, have a think about it with me, M 1 minus x squared, its derivative would be negative 2x, yeah? Now, you can see I have something that looks a lot like negative 2x right there. So you can sort of, I'm, I'm trying to get you to recognize it, like, oh, this is the kind of situation, right? However, because we're extension 1 and not extension 2, uh, we actually get handed a bit of a clue, right? They will often say, let u, this is our new variable that we're going to use for our substitution, equal that inside function. Now we did this with the trigonometric integrals this morning, but now as you're going to see, we're going to do this with all kinds of different functions, right? So to turn this question into a question about u rather than a question about x, uh, I can use this to replace this. And in order to change it from integration with respect to x into integration with respect to what, uh, u, rather, I need to work out this derivative over here. You already told me what this answer is. It's negative 2x, OK? Now, uh, we saw, again, this before. What I could do is I can say up here, I've got something that looks a lot like negative 2x, but I want to make it look exactly like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a negative 2 right there. But to compensate for that, I'm going to have to multiply by negative 1 half. Is that OK? So this is actually all equal. I haven't changed anything. So now, I'm pretty much ready to go, right? I can say, with this negative a half out the front, I can turn this whole thing into something with u's rather than with x's. Have a look. This part here is just u. It's raised to the power of 4. And then, if you have a look at the minus 2x here, I can use that to replace all of my dx's with a du like so, because I arranged it exactly as I wanted it to have. And that's kind of all of the hard work, right? This is going to have that negative a half out the front. When you integrate u to the 4, what happens? u to the 5 on 5. So that's not too dramatic, like so. Of course, we've got our constant of integration there. And in order to tidy up here, I just want to make sure I go back to my original variable. I introduced u to solve it, but I should go back to the fact that it's 1 minus x squared. So I've got a minus there, 1 minus x squared all to the power of 5, and then you divide. How does that look? You happy with that? OK. This is not too complicated. This is what you would call your stock standard simplest kind of integration by substitution. But I'm going to give you two examples of where there's a little more work to do. Uh, it's not super complicated, but you do need to know that you have to do it. So here comes number two. Now, again, in extension one, you're going to get given a substitution, right? However, I want you to just have a look, right? What would you guess is the substitution? It's probably this thing underneath the square root, because you're like, ah, oh, it looks gross, right? Now, this is one of those categories where, unlike over here, where it's like, oh, I guess I could expand if I wanted to, here you're a little more stuck, right? You can't just expand this thing because it's not a, an integer power. It's the power of a half, right? So you were correct. I would hand you this substitution anyway. And so just like before, you can see on my right-hand side, I'll find the derivative, like so. In this case, negative 1. But at this point, the question diverges just a little bit. right? In this first example, we saw this negative 2x, and we were like, cool, I kind of have something that's like that, and it's easy to adjust. right? But over here, 
you're like, mm, I mean, I guess I could put that in, but then what do I do with this? See this x right here? It's not the derivative of the inside function. This is the derivative of the inside function. Okay? Thankfully though, it's just as easy to change this x to be something in terms of u's, I just don't need the derivative for it. Can anyone give me a suggestion? Yeah, go ahead. Um, maybe make x as a subject in which u Have a look at this first line here, right? I already have an x just right there, okay? So if I just rearrange and change the subject, um, that'll work perfectly. So what I'll do is I'll add x to both sides, and I'll subtract u from both sides. You see that? Now, in some ways, this looks like a, what was the point of that? Does this change very much? Well, turns out it actually does. So when we go and do the substitution, I'm going to use all of these pieces. I actually have to use all three of them, right? When I go over here, I've got the integral of, okay, let's see here. So that x there is going to turn into 1 minus u. 1 minus u. In here, this 1 minus x is going to turn into u, square root of u. And then just be cautious, right? This is a negative 1, right? So in order to change this dx into a du, there's actually going to be a, a minus sign hanging out there because of this, right? And now I'm in terms of u. Now, I know when I look at this, I'm like, is this, is it better? I don't really know. I'm not entirely persuaded. The answer is, it is. A little bit more work is required. That's why this is a harder example than this one, right? Let's, let's tie this thing up a little bit. You can see that that negative 1, I could factor that in to there. So that leaves me with u take away 1 inside those brackets. How would I write the square root of u to make it a little friendlier for integration? Fantastic. Yep. Very good. Um, this is the same thing with differentiation as well, right? We want things in index form rather than with square roots flying around. And even though this looks so similar to what we started with, it's better because this can actually be expanded, and expanded quite easily, actually. Uh, remember your index laws. That's u to the power of 1 right there. So in my integrand, u to the power of 1 times u to the half, u to the power of 3 on 2. And then this is minus u to the power of a half. Now, this is messy, but I can at least deal with it, right? Uh, just like we've seen before, our powers are going to go up and we'll divide by our new power, okay? So this is going to be u to the power of 5 on 2 goes up by 1, which is 2 over 2. Um, and what I'm going to do now, because you've seen me do this before, I, I would divide by 5 over 2. As you start to do this more and more often, you're going to get comfortable with the fact that there should be a 2 fifths out the front. Multiplying by reciprocal, same deal, okay? Um, over here, I'll follow that same logic. I'll increase the power first, and then I divide by my new power. Following? Plus my constant of integration. And all that's left at this point is just to go back to get everything back in terms of x's, because I finished with the u's. All the integration is done, so let's just tidy it all up. 1 minus x, wasn't it? Minus 2 thirds, and I'm done. Okay, 